I think the Bitcoin and crypto market are going to do exceptionally well over time. There's a couple of things to get over. And this is something that's kind of plagued me over time. It seems like we listen to people and their narratives about what's going on. And I know a lot of people are saying, we're in a bull run right now. This is a bull market. Even Michael Saylor said, we are in a bull market. And that may be true. But I got to tell you, I see some storms on the horizon. And I just want to bring that to everybody's attention. So the thing that uh, got me today, what I'm uh, alluding to, was there was a quote. And it was from uh, Stanley Druckenmiller. If you don't know Stanley Druckenmiller, he is uh, one of the investment legends. He is one of those investors that uh, people always quote and always talk about because he's been around for quite some time and has navigated these choppy waters. And one of the quotes he talked about, he, he says, uh, from his mentor, he says, mentor taught him two things. He says, never, ever invest in the present. I'm uh, understanding that most of us don't do that. We're waiting for a long-term uh, type of horizon, especially if you're watching my channel. He taught me that you have to visualize the situation 18 months from now. Whatever that is, that's where the price will be, not where it is today, which makes a lot of sense. Then he talks about earnings don't move the overall market. We said again, earnings don't move the overall market. Now, we may see some, some big plays in individual stocks and a little bit of thing here, but it, he says it's the Federal Reserve that really moves the market. And on top of that, the very last sentence, he says, it's liquidity that moves the market. So really it's liquidity and the Federal Reserve. And this is a pretty good statement. And then someone made a good quote down here. He says, he says uh, so Andrew, he's saying the opposite of Buffett. Earl Paul says, no, he's outperformed Buffett massively. And what they're talking about is Warren Buffett always likes to cite the book, um, The Intelligent Investors, an older book from 1949. And it talks about uh, Mr. Market and the emotions. States a rational person will sell if the price is high and buy if the price is low. I got to tell you, as time has gone on, I've come to realize that uh, the market is not very rational. and It's not full of a lot of rational people. Believe me, I've been there. I've done those things. Learn the lessons along the way. And, and if you really take a look at it and just to take a step back, there's the fear and greed index. And some people will just tell me, Rob, we'll just trade off that. Just trade off the fear and greed index. This is from Ben's site and the Cryptoverse. They steal a lot of his stuff. And you can just see like right here that if we're talking about fear and greed index, see the these green dots here? That's extreme greed. And some people will say, well, when it hits that, just, you know, that's, that's, that's over, it's over, overbought. Just sell it. And you can do that, but even extreme greed here at the price of $15,730, 11th November 2020, just remember that sometimes it just keeps going up and up and up. And then it kind of cools off and goes up. But it seems like as we go into the higher ranges, the more greed that we have, greed begets greed. And I know you've probably felt this if you've been here since 2021. Maybe you uh, didn't unpack a lot of those bags, maybe in 2017 or heck, maybe 2013. But it just seems like uh, the rational person may say, you know what, things are getting overheated. I'm going to sell. I got to tell you, most people don't do that. And it actually works uh, in reverse. We can see here that, you know, we've got uh, time frames when we've got uh, uh, extreme fear at uh, four, almost $4,000 in 2018, but it can still go lower. 3,2600, almost 2,800, somewhere around there. And then again, as time goes on. So I don't think it's very a, a big rational thing. And there is something that I always talk about, but I don't show you guys the last three slides, but I think are the most important. I mean, I have to apologize now. So when we're talking about investments, of course, here we're talking about the uh, four-year cycles. Everybody knows this. I'm not going to go through this again. But these last three slides, I always forget. One is once we start to top out, uh, I'm going to step away from this channel because as time goes on, my channel and other channels, we kind of get caught up into the hype. I don't want to do that. I'm going to step away when things get overheated and I'll be back in the bear market when I think people need a little bit more uh, consoling. And then on top of that, this, these last two slides are this, which if we're talking about rational investors, uh, this is when a rational investor starts to accumulate and buy things when there's nothing going on. I don't know about you, but things are pretty damn boring here in the crypto market. And this is the time to buy. 
So just remember that the rational investor does these types of things. The irrational investor, which is the majority of investors out there, do the exact opposite. But there's this part here. There's two things. And it really comes down to the crux of, of the thumbnail and what I'm trying to get to, which is earnings don't move the overall market. It's the Fed of Reserve and it's liquidity that moves the markets. Now, yesterday we talked about liquidity in a pretty good detail. And we talked, it was about JP Morgan. And what we took a look at, it wasn't just Bitcoin and they think it's going to 45,000. They're wrong. I think it's going to go higher than that, but who knows? But we're talking about liquidity and it comes down to the M1 money supply. And we can see that, that the liquidity really has been a surplus for quite some time. And why has it been a surplus? Because the Fed has stated, well, the economy is healthy. Well, we've done pretty good uh, so far. But you have to remember, though, if we zoom in, we can see that actually the liquidity is uh, getting reduced as they are stopping or taking back the funds, quantitative tightening. And the liquidity issue isn't there because it's starting to dry up just a little bit. Not to say that it's dried up to, to where we're in, you know, in some kind of desert, but these are the things it is. And it's because the economy is hurting, the inflation is high, and the Fed keeps raising rates. So if that is the case, then how, where are we going to go? Now, we've taken a look about this yesterday the probabilities for the Fed meeting. And these things are flipping back and forth. I believe they're going to, they might actually pause this one. Uh, and we, we took a look at an article of where uh, the different board members have said that uh, this is uh, getting a little bit too much. And they might pause, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't state that here. I think it'll flip over as time goes on. But there's a big thing I have to have you remember, which everybody talks about the bull run and the bull market. And here it is. But you have to remember this, is that if they pause on June 14th, after the Fed meeting, they could start, start it again. They could start hiking, and then they could pause and pause, or they could do whatever they want to do. But at some point, they're going to have to pivot. And when they pivot, that means they're actually going to reduce rates. And that's what everybody's waiting for. That's when they say, well, that's when the market rips. Well, not historically. So when the Fed pivots, I, for some reason, people I haven't heard people talk about this too much, but I have to remind people that when the Fed pivots and they start cutting rates, uh, every single time you've got a stock market crash and then happened in the 1969 recession, 73 double dip, Gulf war, dot com bubble and go financial crisis. And we can actually take a look at it, uh, which you may have seen this on the thumbnail itself, that when the fed pivots, that's when the stocks, the stock market goes down. Does that mean that Bitcoin will do the exact uh, inverse? Well, we talked about that yesterday. I'm not going to go over that again. Uh, I'll check. I'll put the video in the description. But you have to also remember one more thing is that the Fed will pivot and it happened in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2020. When the Fed pivots, 2010s, excuse me, 11. When the Fed pivots, you see a lot of pain. You see a lot of the markets start to take a big tumble. So if we can see that, what does that mean about the actual economy? Because there's two different things. There is the economy, and there is the stock market, the stocks, crypto, st everything that, that we, can, we can think about as far as like stocks, securities, and crypto and digital assets. So when that happens, you have to remember this blue line right here, this is the S&P 500. This is the uh, coincident economic activity index. It's made up by uh, four things. Those are non-farm payroll employment, average hours worked, unemployment rate, and inflation adjusted uh, personal income. When those goes down, that is not a good sign for the economy. And this little part here in, in the, uh, that shaded out, that is a official recession when he had two uh, quarters of economic decline. So we can just see right here that of course, when that happens, the stocks, S&P 500, NASDAQ, whatever you wanna say, will go down, then the economy goes down. But what do you see recovers first? It's the stocks. Stocks recover first and the economy keeps going down a little bit and then they, they start to uh, go up. Same thing happened in 08, 09. We can see the same thing. Here's where it bottomed out, March 2009. But the economy still went down as the stock went up. And of course, we can also see this uh, more recently than the coronavirus, uh, not as, as prevalent. But we can see that stocks bottomed first, then the economy, and then they came back up. So I think there's some good things ahead of us, a lot of good things ahead of us. The problem is that I just think that people forget about when the Fed pivots, we're going to see a little bit of pain. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But 
there's not all things that are boring. There's a lot of uh, interesting things happening in the crypto market. First of, of all, this is uh, Dan. Uh, he is guy from Crypto Recruiter. He's got his own YouTube channel, link in the description. And he says, breaking Snack, a Cardano meme coin, has broken $50 million market cap. I don't know what Snack was, but apparently it is another meme coin, just like Pepe, that I'm pretty sure doesn't do anything. Maybe it does something. Correct me in the comments section. But it is amazing to me that uh, the valuation is now $52 million, uh, over $50 million for the the uh, valuation amazing to me for a coin that has absolutely nothing this is just gambling if you want to gamble i've got nothing against it i lived in vegas for two years but just remember this is gambling just so you know so if you want to have some fun have at it and then lastly there are some good things happening on the horizon this is from in the block uh ethereum upgrade uh, ethereum uh, protocol improvement protocol 4844 Looks like they're going to be significantly lower layer two transaction costs. Check this out. Ethereum mainnet, well, that's just mainnet. And that's actually how much it is right now, $6 or so. But in Starknet, it goes from 116 to 12 cents. Optimism, 38 to 4. Arbitrum, 26 to 3. Polygon, 24 to 2. And ZK Sync, 21 to 2. So that is a step in the right direction. We need it cheaper, faster, better for us to hit mass adoption. And lastly, I find this very funny, Peter Schiff. Uh, I just put a tweet out, and he is a big bear. He hates Bitcoin. But he says, I'm pleased to announce an art project with one of my favorite artists, Market Price. This collaboration features the original painting Golden Triumph, as well as a series of prints and ordinals inscribed on the Bitcoin blockchain. If you're not familiar, ordinals just overtook Solana as the number two for transactions as far as NFTs, and they're only behind Ethereum. So another use case for bitcoin and of course palm says welcome peter we've been waiting for you and peter doesn't shy away from me. he's like yeah i haven't arrived yet but here's your chance to buy something to commemorate what you hope will be the early days of bitcoin and its most steadfast critic if i'm wrong these signed original prints may have a lot of lot of value one day and i gotta tell you this is the first time i've actually agreed with peter schiff but that's it for today so look if you like today's video give it a thumbs up i know it wasn't the most positive things and uh, but just to make you aware of the things that are potentially coming up. But uh, I want to say thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Like it, subscribe, and that is it for this one. So thanks so much. I'll see you on the next one.